How's it going? Are you someone who wants to work with venomous snakes but you don't have the opportunity to work with them yet? Today, we're going to talk about some species of snakes that you can work with that will help prepare you for keeping venomous snakes. Tiger rat snakes, Pataeus carinatus, and we're going to look at the yellowtail crebo. called a Pataeus carinatus. This is a giant keeled rat snake from Southeast Asia and these guys can get upwards of 12 feet long so these get to be a really really big snake. So if you ever think about working with big elapids like king cobras and things like that this is a great snake to kind of train yourself uh, to kind of realize how quick those big snakes can be. So this is another snake that we've had here at our facility for a while. Let's see just a really big collar. How cool is that? This guy right here is probably sitting at about nine feet long right now. And look at that. You can see that threat posture right there, what he's doing. He's flattening himself out in the front end. He's looking back at me. I'm going to readjust him here so that he's not going to swing back and bite me right there. But take a look at that snake. Giant, super beautiful. And you can see, he can, just like a cobra, he can lift up the front part of his body up off the ground pretty well. Uh, gives him a really good range when he's striking. Take a look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful species of snake. This guy's a little bit darker than your typical uh, Pataeus carinatus. He's almost all black. Usually these guys have a big stripe that goes down their back. You can see he's a little scared by Donnie's eyes on his camera there. But, so when you're working with big elapids like this, uh, a lot of times what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to tail them. So you're going to have to grab them by the end of the tail just like this. You need to keep your distance so that the animal doesn't get too close to your legs. And you want to use your hook as a distancing tool to keep the front end of the animal away from you. And you're going to have to get real good at working that hook to keep the front end of that snake away from you. Because if you don't, it can end up being a real bad day for you. Such a beautiful species of snake. Is this a, like an easy snake for somebody to acquire? No, these are actually pretty rare. Uh, these are a little bit tough to come by, especially where the demand for them is so high because there are so few of them being made available right now. Uh, these are a really, really uh, rare snake as of right now, 2020. So you don't want to let this snake go double back on you. You don't want it to come up the hook with you. You'll notice that he's wrapping his tail around my arm up here. Cobras are really well known for doing that, where they'll wrap their tail around your hand or your other hook to try and leverage that to swing themselves back up on you. So uh, the, the Pataeus are a really great animal if you want to learn how to work with bigger or longer elapids, big cobras, and things like that. Putting him back into his holding bin, uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start feeding him in towards that holding bin. You always want to have your lid handy, uh, and it does even help to have a, uh, a loop on the top of the lid so that you can use a hook, you can use a tool so you don't get your hands too close to the business. So you want to keep that right there. Usually what you want to do is pull the lid back like this. A lot of places will use something called a U-plex, which is a piece of plastic that's cut a U straight out of it like this on the edge right here. So while you're feeding that snake in there, the edges come right to both sides and blocks the snake from coming back out because that's the last thing that you want to happen if you're putting away a venomous snake. So you want him to go right in there and then once he's inside of his enclosure, you want to either use your tool or, or if you've got a thick enough um, box, you can use your hand, but you always want to try and keep your fingers as safe as possible. So you're going to use a tool to hold the lid down, clamp your sides, and then you're good to go. So I haven't really messed with this one at all. Not sure exactly how it's going to go. So 
with go putting the animal away, uh, same thing when you're taking the animal out, usually if you're working with a venomous snake, you don't want to use your fingers around the edges where a snake could potentially bite you. You want to use a tool like your hook or like a pair of tongs to lift up the lid, get it a safe distance away from the animal, and then take it off. This is a really beautiful male yellow tail Prevo right here. You can see what he's doing is he's doubling up right there. He's got a lot of energy moving around. In a captive setting, you generally don't want the snake moving away from you, like getting away from you. Because like if I let him go right now, he's just gonna keep going, keep going, keep going, and I can kind of grab him like this. But in a lot of places like zoos or places like near where we're at, you don't want to let that snake get out of your your grasp. You don't want it to get away from you because it could potentially get under things, get away from you, uh, hide in things cause more ruckus than it's it's really due. So you kind of want to have a hand on the snake. If you need to readjust, you can readjust. But you constantly want to be making sure that you're in the right realm and keeping the animal under control. If you'll notice, what he's trying to do when I've got him up on the hook here, what he's trying to do is inch his body up close to the edge, and that's the last thing that you want to happen when you've got a, a cobra on the end of your hook, is it for, to, for it to slide up and then slide down your handle here, which is something that you definitely don't want to happen. And he's just working right to that, trying to get his body up over the edge of that hook to get himself up. So, let me see if I can get so when you're working with a Crevo, you won't always want to make sure that you've got your uh, hands in the right spot. You don't want to give them too much play. And you want to make sure that you're handling them with confidence. Because if you give them an inch, they'll take it. Next snake we're going to be checking out is something called the tiger rat snake, Spilotes pilatus. They're a South American species, are boreal colubrid. They can get upwards of 10 feet long. They can be very defensive. And so just like with working with some of the other snakes that we've worked with, and when you're working with venomous snakes, you also want to use this practice, what you're going to want to do when you're opening up your enclosure is you're going to want to use your tool, press down on the lid so that if the animal is startled or scared in any way, that it doesn't push the lid off on you. You want to hold the lid down under your clamps and then use your tool to open up the lid. So you're going to open it up just like this. Try and keep your fingers away from the action. And you can see this tiger rat snake's already starting to come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it right by the tail just like this, lift up with the hook, and try and keep the front of this animal away from you because that is where the pointy bit is. So the tiger rat snakes are really pretty. They've got a black and yellow coloration to them. they got bands that go down their body that help them camouflage out in the wild. You can see he's kind of turning towards me here. So what I'm going to do is just adjust myself. And you want to try and keep your hook under the front end of the body of the snake to kind of keep that front end under your control or, you know, as under control as you can to try and keep it away from you. You see what he's doing? He's coming right underneath, looped his body around, which is something you don't want to happen when you're working with a cobra. So what you would generally do is try to t turn your hook, get their body out from underneath there, and then stop them from climbing up that hook. Uh, if you are a smart keeper, you'll have a second hook really close by. So if you need to drop your hook, you can because you don't want that front end getting up to the handle just like this guy right here did. And so you'll have a secondary hook or a secondary tool that you can use to grab them and pull them right off that hook. And worst comes to worst, drop the end of your hook because you do not want that snake biting you. You're using a hook wrong! What are you doing? You want to talk about um, it? Um, uh, I am working on an incubator. That's an incubator? Yes, I'm going to incubate babies. Of course, when I meant babies, I was talking Infusoria, which are like Proteus and Amoebas. And I want Cyclops because this is a Parada rearing acrylic cube vessel. And this is, I just tried to polish it up because it's, it's been abused.